Studio One's repeater. This should be a pretty brief video. The repeater is a straightforward device uh, that essentially repeats MIDI data with a variety of settings for controlling how the repeated data performs, at least as far as its velocity, pitch, and length is concerned. And we can create our own patterns and then save these as presets as well. So for the setup, I've got a my tie loaded up with a simple bell patch. And we can actually access our repeater by coming to the instruments panel. I'll press F6. And then at the very top here, we have note effects. And we can see that our repeater is down at the bottom here. There's a selection of sequences that you can actually load up, uh, presets that come with it. We can also open up the inspector by pressing F4, come to the note effects panel, click the plus sign, and then I will grab the repeater here, close out the inspector, and then let's bring up our Mai Tai again, just so we can have our virtual keyboard visible. And anytime that our uh, note effects devices like the repeater are closed or out of sight, we can click this icon here. That will show it when it's uh, highlighted in this orange color, then that will show it rather. When it's gray, that will hide it. So we've got this up in the front, and we'll just take this section by section and cover each parameter here. At the very top, we've got our power for activating and deactivating. We have an area for storing, uh, loading, importing, exporting our, any presets. So if you do decide to go come in and do some create some intricate patterns or whatever, you'll want to be sure that you come to this area here and save that as a preset. Next, we can also access our sequences by coming to this folder here that are come uh, pre-installed for use. We next have a rate which we can choose between working with say 16th or 8th notes uh, to work in relation to our song tempo. If we click the sync button here and deactivate that then we're going to work in Hertz. And we have a range from 2 Hertz all the way up to 25 Hertz. And I'll just go ahead and take that back down and put the sync back on. Now next we have steps, and by default we're going to have 8 steps opened up that we can work with. We can have a maximum of 32. In order to add steps, we'll just turn this knob here, and then you can see we now have our full 32 steps available to us. And I'll come back to the 8 steps. So I'll deactivate this real quick and then play our uh, Mai Tai again to hear our bell. I'm just playing a single note at the time. And now if we go ahead and reactivate, let's hear how this kind of default patch sounds. Okay, so we can hear those eight repeats coming and the rate, if I adjust this down to say quarter notes, Okay, so that's pretty straightforward, and then we've taken a look at our steps. Now we've got velocity. This uh, level is going to control overall uh, all of the velocities for our steps. So if we adjust this, we're, we're going to decrease all of them. Regardless of whether we come in and make individual adjustments to each step, uh, this will still control them all relative to their own individual settings. Now when we have input selected, this will pay attention to the velocities that we're playing on our keyboard and uh, make use of that within the repeater. If we disengage, then we're essentially just going to use our main level control here. So I'll go ahead and leave that on input. We then have a scale. So if we come to the right, then you can see this is going to increase the velocities uh, as we go out further in our steps. If we come to the left, then we're going to decrease our velocity. I'll control click to put that back. We next have gate, which is going to control our note length. And we could either come and grab an end of one of the steps and just pull that in left or right to adjust our note length. If you take note of the gate knob here, this will update to correspond with where we're at. And again, we can come in and grab uh, the gain knob as well to make our adjustments. Now the scale is similar to our velocity scale. so. As we come to the left, we're going to 
decrease in note length gradually as we come out in our steps. If we come to the right, then we increase our note length as we come out to the right. I'll control click and put that back. Now we have a pitch. We do, it's not visible by default, but we have pitch control here at the very top. So by default, we're going to get the pitch that we played on our keyboard. So if I play C, and you can really hear what that gate, if I bring in the gate a bit here, you can see how that affects our note length here. Now, uh, regarding the pitch, we can adjust these individually as long as we have pitch selected. So after I highlight pitch, we can come in and I can make an adjustment. This is gonna work in semitones. So we'll go ahead and grab this. We can actually take this down by 128 semitones plus or minus. So there's a pretty big choice that we have available to us when we're working with the pitches. So as you can see, now that pitch is active, I can come in and adjust these individually. And if we go ahead and trigger our C note, And let's, I actually like that. Let's take this up a bit to eighth notes. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a really cool melody actually. Um, and then we have the scale. So the scale for pitch is, works exactly the same as for our gate and velocity. So as we come to the right, then we are going to adjust our uh, pitch going out to our steps upward. And if we come to the left, we're gonna take those pitches down. And this probably isn't gonna sound as good. If we come back up. Okay, so just know that it keeps the same relative pitch as what we input it in manually. It's just going to raise those relative pitches up even further as we go out in our steps. So I'll control click to put that back. And we've just seen that by activating pitch, we can come in and adjust these individually. And we also have the, the option to adjust our velocity and gate by selecting this individually for each step. So now once this is selected, I can come in and change that gate for step number four. Number two, I can adjust the velocity. Whereas if I deselect this, then we're going to be adjusting the whole group. So there's some pretty cool features and uh, options that we have available to us when working with the repeater. And if you're someone who likes to use a device like this when you're working with your MIDI, then go ahead and give it a shot. And now that you know what each parameter is for, hopefully it will help you to be a bit more uh, creative and get some more ideas down. If we come to the presets, we can also take a look at these and just kind of see how some of the presets can create really compl complicated and intricate patterns here. So if I choose this one here and go ahead and trigger a key. And this almost reminds me of an arpeggiator. Let's uh, try a couple more of these. And actually seeing these steps and how they're set up reminds me that I wanted to mention, even if we have this, say, uh, step number 11, the gate has been pulled over our uh, control for number 12. But just as you can see, we can still access number 12, even if it's covered uh, with the uh, level for number 11. So this is just a cool feature that will help us get what we want done. Okay, and so that is the repeater.